Mary doing? Um, you know, <laughs> Mary's been really put through the ringer and you would think they would take it easy on her this season, but it, it gets worse. So dying is not enough of a torture that they can put Mary Sibley through. She needs work. She needs to be dragged from her grave, resurrected, and then forced to do things. So it's, it's an interesting... It's an, it, it, it was very interesting to be Mary this year because that whole... That light that she had that was almost out at the beginning of the first season but John reignited in her and then her son being brought back in the maternal instinct having all of that stripped away in death and coming back was an interesting uh, part to play. I mean, how much can we say? How much can we say? It's a whole season. Tease. You just um, don't really know what's going to happen, and there doesn't really seem a way that there's a happy ending anymore. Right. There just seems a way in order for them to at least try to be together. But the show goes to such a dark place this season that I don't know if you'll ever get the happy ending. Yeah, and I don't think you want to you want to get glimpses of that and hints of that, but you don't I mean, we had 10 episodes to you know, to pull this off, so you don't want to see that right away and it's definitely a build, and I feel like every episode, it changes a little bit they get a little closer, and the next episode, they're pulled apart again, they get a little closer and I think as a viewer, that's what you want it's all certainly fun to do um, as an actor I also feel like it's quite, I, I've quite liked the season, how real the relationship feels between John and Mary so it's not yeah. all like Wuthering Heights, like I love you, I love you. It's yeah. really like they have spats with each other, which right. I quite like. And it was interesting to do that because even though they're dealing with like defeating the devil and I'm a witch, all right, get over it. It's like there's a realness to their relationship, which I think is the fact that we know each other so well now in season three, that just comes out in our work somewhere. So was the conflict between them about, uh, I don't like that you're a witch and I'm going to kill you. Like, is that completely resolved? I mean, I mean, I think that's one of those fun things that maybe it's never completely resolved. Uh, but um, is John handling it a little bit better this year? That part of it, the witchcraft part of it, yeah, he's handling it a little bit better. He's not the witch hunter, so so to speak, that he thought he was in season two. Um, but it, it's trying to, I guess it's it's funny to even talk about, but it's trying to get beyond something so extraordinary um, and, and, and listen to your heart and listen to your mind know that they are connected and that's that's what John ultimately wants. I think it's quite like finding out that like your partner's like a secret heroin addict and being like really mad about it but then realizing actually all your neighbors and all your friends are too because that's he found out I was a witch and then he's like oh hang on there are witches everywhere. Little by I guess little. It's not every such a big single, deal. Yeah exactly. <laughs> but down deep inside. Do you still want to kill her? Um, I think he wrestles with that this year. You know it's you can't change I mean, it's very easy to do on television in one episode, too, but I, we try not to change instantly how you feel in one episode. So I think it's, you go back and forth, and, uh, you know, he still knows his heart's there. Um, she shocks him, she, you know, she obviously, spoiler alert, she comes back, she's not, you know, necessarily dead. Um, and then he's got to wrestle with that. But I, I think it's, it's you know, it's tumultuous, it changes, you know, throughout the year. But he still inherently knows, I mean, that's what he's been fighting for since the pilot, since the first season. And so far, as much as he's liked to let that go, he did he tried to in season two, but he couldn't. And uh, I don't think he ever can. Now that you're in the season three, you're getting stride and good rhythm going, what kind of shorthand do you have between each other? I like to say to Shane sometimes, oh, I'm going to do something a little different this time. And he's like, did you do it? I'm like, oh, I guess she didn't pick up that it was different what I was doing. So why do anything different? That's boring. Uh, shorthand. I don't know. I think that... I guess I guess it comes almost more behind the scenes as well, just being more comfortable with someone going into a scene. So you you trust the person that 
much you're working with and trust that they can uh, back you up, follow you up, pick you up, do all those type of things, especially if you're extra tired and on our show, it's pretty exhausting um, to kind of keep everyone going in every one of you. I think that, uh, I, oh my God. So dreamy. Except him. I don't, I don't. He's so dreamy. He's the fornicator. <laughs> Clearly. No. What's up? Oh. Oh. Thing that he had with the Indians? My thing that I had? Yeah, um, little thing that he had with the Indians. Uh, no, not this one. John's more, I feel like he's more human than he ever was in this, this season. He's dressing a little bit nicer. He's a little less dirty. He's more of trying to become uh, situated into the town and, uh, and become a part of the town again. Um, he tried in the beginning, in the season one. He couldn't in season two. He was on the run, and now he's, he's back, and she keeps coming back into his his world and he doesn't really know ultimately what to do. Okay, thanks everyone. We have to bring them over oh. the next table. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thanks guys. It's nice to meet you. Good to see you. <laughs>